Hey guys, this question is asking you to find the area of the red triangle inside of the square. It's like they're giving us the area of these three white triangles and they want us to find the area of the red triangle. This doesn't look too hard at first, but I think it's incredibly tedious. If somebody knows a simpler solution, please let me know. I'm going to share with you what I ended up doing. I saw we have four sides here. I'm going to give them each a variable, x, y, w, and z. And I want to solve for these variables. This side right here is the sum of the w plus z. And this bottom will be the sum of the x plus the y. So now we have to make some equations. The area of this triangle is going to be one half base times height. So here's the equation that goes with it. So it's the base of x plus y times the height of z divided by 2 equals 48. Next, let's do this triangle. Here's the equation right here. It's the base of w plus z times the height of y divided by 2 equals the area of 18. And last, we have this y triangle up here, which is going to be w times x divided by 2 equals 18. And then we have one more equation. Since we know this thing is a square, we know these two sides are equal. So we can set w plus z equal to x plus y. Right now, we have four equations with four variables we are able to solve this. So all these top ones have this annoying two in the denominator. We can get rid of that by multiplying both sides of all the equations by two. This left-hand side, the denominators just go away. And on the right-hand side, we'll just double all these numbers. Next, I want to try to shrink this down into three equations with three variables. So I want to get rid of the W in these top equations. So in order to do that, I want to plug in X plus Y into this W plus Z. The reason I can do that is because I know that W plus Z equals X plus Y. So that means I can substitute it in for that. Now I just got to get rid of this W down here. The way I'm do that is isolate the w in this equation. I'm going to subtract z from both sides. On the left hand side I have w and on the right hand side I have x plus y minus z. So now I can plug in x plus y minus z in for this w and that looks like this right here. If I look at these top three equations I now have three variables with three equations. I can get rid of this stuff down here and let's scoot this over. So from here I have three equations and three variables. I'm going to try plugging this into a 3D grapher and see if I can see the solution set there. So here's our 3D graph right here. We can move it around a little bit. So I'm going to plug in our three equations here. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's two ribbons. You can move around and look at them. How exciting is that? Now let's plug in our next one. So we can see this intersection is a line now. Hopefully when we do this third one, we'll be able to see where all three of them meet at one point. Let's see if we can find that point. I think that's the point we're interested in, but for some reason it won't let me click to find out what it is. Well, this thing's too confusing, but if this were neater, we could actually see where those three equations intersect would be our answer set, but I'm not gonna be able to find the answer with this one. So if we shrink this down to two equations with two variables, then I can just graph it on an X, Y plane, and that'll be a whole lot easier to find the solution. So the best way to do this is if I isolate the Z here and the Z here, then I can make that Z go away. I'll show you what I mean. So I'll drag these out of the way. Now from here to get Z by itself, I just need to divide both sides by X plus Y. And now I have what I wanted, which was Z alone on one side. So Z equals 96 over X plus Y. Let's get rid of this right here and let's bring everything up. And let's do the same thing to this one. So first I'm going to distribute the X to each of these. So I have X squared plus XY minus XZ equals 36. Now I want to get the Z alone. So I'm going to subtract everything that doesn't have a Z over to the other side. This left-hand side is just going to be negative xz, and the right-hand side is going to be 36 minus x squared minus xy. Now I divide everything by negative x, and I get z equals 36 minus x squared minus xy over negative x. I can clean this up by dividing top and bottom by negative 1, and so all the negative signs will become positive, and all the positive signs will become negative. Now I have another equation for z. So let's get rid of all this stuff, and let's condense all of this. So both of these are equal to z. Since z equals all of this, I'm going to plug this in for this z, and we'll do that right there. Now let's move this equation down. Let's scoot these over. Now we have two equations and two variables. If we graph these two, it's going to be far easier to see the solution. Here we are in the Desmos grapher. There are two equations. We can see they intersect in a couple places, but this won't matter because we can't have a negative value. We're only interested in quadrant one. It looks like this is our solution right here. Nine, three is the intersection point. So we know that X equals nine and Y equals three. We can now solve for Z because we can plug in nine for the X's and three for the Y. And we can then solve this to find out that Z is equal to eight. And let's drag that up here. So now that we have three of the solutions, we can get rid of this and let's bring these up. We plug in nine for this X and three for this Y. You can see that the side length of the square is equal to 12. So that means this one's also 12. And then we can plug in nine for this X, three for this Y, and eight for this Z. And since this is eight and we know the whole side is 12, we also know that W is equal to four. So we found a solution that works. And based on our graphs, I suspect it's the only one. Now to find the area of the red triangle, all we need to do is take the square and subtract the three triangles. The area of the square is 12 squared. And then we could just subtract the values of the three triangles. 12 squared is 144, and then all this becomes 60. And we can label it meter squared. That is the answer to our question. This took me 23 minutes and 22 seconds. Let me know if you know an easier way to do this.